Hello, beautiful humans. Zen Jen Pinkstone signing in with you today. So in about an hour, yeah, about an hour away from my next live podcast with Nathaniel Gillis, part two of our previous chat. He is a demonologist with lots of experience, both personal and the kind that you get from researching intentionally. I am really excited to have another chat with him because not only do I intend to strengthen our collective with the knowledge that these incredible humans that I am connecting with so so intentionally, so excitedly, so that we can illumine these mysterious and enticing and intriguing endeavors that we humans are engaging here on planet earth to better understand and to immerse ourselves in an experience that you know we we mean to have and that's why we're here so so many things have transpired since i last spoke with nathaniel there's so many different like key moments that were, were really interesting if you watch the replay to our part one. Um, the, the conversation that we had, it, I, I prefaced it with, when I first saw you on Leap Project, Nathaniel, I knew I had to speak with you more partially because I didn't agree <laughs> with everything that you were saying. And I just... I, a lot of us, whenever we, and I'm not apart from this, I've had my own experiences of being triggered and uh, being ignited, I guess you could say, with an inflamed ego. But what I have come to realize through my journey of learning and discovering and growth is that all of those things, learning, discovery, and growth, they happen so much more seamlessly and readily whenever we are welcoming of the experience of merging with something that doesn't necessarily resonate, that doesn't necessarily land with us and uh, synchronize with our systematic thoughts and belief system. You see, there are so many perspectives here, like through throughout intertwining and betwixt our collective macroscopic experience because those of you who you know have have embarked upon a spiritual awakening a spiritual journey you've come to realize regardless of your spiritual philosophy that in in some respect the essence of who we are is that we are all of one consciousness right but the experience of being human gives that, that illusory simulation of separation. That's the point. <laughs> so that we can extract differing perspectives as humans and then take that learning with us into the primordial essence of all that we are and ever will be as we venture onwards on the trajectory of, of becoming and of, you know, just transpiring everything that is meant for us. And whenever we become triggered, whenever we become, you know, pissed off, <laughs> for lack of a better word, or irritated that someone is saying something that, you know, is not conducive or in alignment with our own experience, um, this is something to look more closely at. This, uh, th that's what I have discovered that Instead of balking and removing myself from that orbit of experience, I have a different response. And my response is to lean in closer and to look more closely at like, what is this? What is this that is like rubbing me the wrong way right now? Like, cause I want to understand. And as a, as a six, three profile line, this, this works. If you're really new to human design, I mean, I'm, I'm relatively new to human design. I didn't even know it existed until January of this year, but it has shaped my world in so, such a myriad of ways. Like I have, I have dappled in so many different paradigms and this is characteristic of a six profile line. We hop in and out of paradigms one after the next and 
some of us seemingly have some confusion and understanding of like, where is it that we fit? Because I fit so well in all of these places, you know, I, in, in my time in the virtual landscape, since I got my first smartphone in 2017, I, I was late to this party and I made a grand entrance, so to speak. <laughs> mm. But since I entered the virtual landscape in an intentional way, after my, um, I guess some would characterize them as like nervous breakdowns in the corporate world that was definitely not in alignment with my soul path to uh, work as a telemarketer or to work in health and human services. I did my jobs well, just like I've done all of my jobs very well. And this is why it's been so confusing for me, you guys. It's been, it's been so confusing about like, what is it that I'm really here to do? Because I'm an excellent marketer. I'm an excellent, uh, I'm an excellent coach. I've coached many people of many different walks of life and many different sub niches. And I've provided transformation in a myriad of ways for a vast spectrum of people. I'm also a reader and a healer. And I have worked in, you know, the harnessing and the manipulating of energies um, in, in, in many different, using many different modalities and reading many different uh, types of charts such as astrology and the newest being human design. But that's actually why I love human design. Human design is amazing. And the reason why it's amazing is because it is a melting pot of all of these other modalities that fit together so seamlessly, but in their own flavor of expression and in a, a newer, like almost a 2.0 version of these modalities, many of them being thousands of years old, like the I Ching developed in China. I mean, just in learning what it is that I have recently, I have been able to extrapolate this impression of the I Ching as being, I mean, ultimately it's, it's made up of hexagrams. It's a very old form of divination originating in China about 2000 years ago, right? And it, it's made up of, uh, two different elements that were originally, I mean, you can go out to like half prize books or something and get like a, um, an I Ching little starter set and it will come with little rods or sticks and coins. And after learning more about the I Ching and human design, I've realized that, you know, the way in which this fits so perfectly together, like whenever you can see, whenever you can corroborate one type of modality with another, and you can find that common golden thread betwixt the two, that for me is the most substantial form of evidence of these metaphysical properties that we are subjected to as humans and whenever it stands the test of time over thousands of years like across millennia and then it kind of re-enters our our cosmos or our, our re-enters our orbit of understanding in kind of this new 2.0 version sort of a way like with human design and even with ai and the new innovative forms of technology and science like quantum physics, what these very rudimentary uh, pieces that came about 2000 years ago, the coins and the sticks, what they can equate to for me is binary code. Binary code of that, you know, we, we think that we only recently discovered this, but it's really just a rehashing of a very old discovery that it mirrors the duality of our existence in this simulation. The binary code in its essence, in its essential primordial essence, it is, um, it is kind of that expression of the duality that is so prevalent here in the 3D world. Would you agree? Like, can you see that? So much different research and so many different studies that are being done on, um, you know, uh, psychotropics 
and hallucinogens and how they open up differing parts of the brain and you know these are things that many people who have experimented with these things they've known about them for quite some time but we are um, we are corroborating and we are substantiating evidence that speaks to these things that we've already kind of innately or uh, subconsciously known as a collective and um, there is some evidence to suggest that when we are when, when someone is under the influence or has you know taken this substance that you know opens up differing areas of the brain some have claimed that um, you can actually see in different light forms binary code ones and zeros and I remember speaking on a podcast recently on leak project like uh, with rex bear asking him like how how is it that so much diversity is possible with just ones and zeros it's kind of weird you know but it is and these hexagrams formed with the i ching it's interesting because it's just two different elements you know just the sticks and the coins and there are 64 base pairs in DNA which is the exact same number of combinations of these hexagrams that were devised in the I Ching of 2000 years ago right and when Ra Uru Hu uh, was was being given the, the prophecy of human design during those eight days um, in Ibiza it was it, the information that was given to him it wasn't necessarily called what it is today but um, he was given the information about neutrinos and neutrinos is very uh, cutting-edge science we have only just recently come to um, you know substantiate and confirm the evidence of the subatomic particles that are they they hit earth in like a you could call it a trickle or a stream and 70 percent of them come from the sun and so it's interesting whenever um you hear about these solar flares that you know they come out of nowhere and then all of a sudden everyone on earth is going through something like simultaneously to each other like just like i mean i know i was a couple of weeks ago and I know most people in my family were and everyone that I spoke to was going through something as well it's it, it's it's happening in this way that we think that we are this individual right and we are we absolutely are that is one perspective everything is scalar and that is a scalar microscopic perspective of a reality that we have access to but there is a macroscopic scalar perspective that we have access to as well if we open up to that. And the way in which we do that is we open up our perspectives to, you know, we, we, we don't box ourselves in to these viewpoints and these beliefs that we have accumulated on our journey thus far. Much of that is just our brain being trained by trauma. That's, that's the absolute truth of it. If you are dead set in this way and not those ways, or it is, you know, my way or the highway or this thing and not that, you are firmly rooting yourself into that duality perspective that, you know, it, it can be as real as you want it to be. It's absolutely valid as a perspective and it's yours to have. But if it is your intention to ascend in this way that you're able to see macroscopically a wider scope of all that is possible and you are open to differing um, differing viewpoints from different people and you train yourself and even train your brain because your brain is simply a part of this body that is going to waste away one day just like the rest of your flesh it's very finite and it's you know it's real for now but it's less real than the primordial part of you that you innately are and always will be if you train your brain and you train your focus to lean in to other people whenever they are sharing something that is not necessarily resonant with what it is you believe 
it is going to allow you these portal access points to greater scopes of perspective and it's going to give you that hawk or that eagle eye high up above the landscape that you're it, it rather than being the mouse down below in the grass and not able to see the forest for the trees does this make sense is this resonating I am very excited about my work with human design and something that the golden thread that I have recently extracted, not only with, you know, my, my study and my research into this incredible modality, it's a science. It's a science of differentiation, the differentiation between human beings. And it is like, I can't even tell you how incredibly intriguing it is for me to learn something new about it every single day because there's so much there there's so much there to explore and it sends me on to these deep dives into these other modalities like the I Ching like astrology like quantum physics with the neutrinos and it, it allows me this vantage point from this higher access point of so many different explorations and that's how I know that I'm going to be embarking on this endeavor probably for the rest of my life and that's like one of the first times I've ever felt that it's amazing um, and the application that I feel is so incredibly important right now to earth to humanity is the study of relationships and this is what I aim to embark upon with my podcast Zen Gen Connections that I hope you'll tune into in the next 45 minutes I'm going to drop a link between myself and Nathaniel Gillis the demonologist that we're going to be having a part two chat about um, when in the study of relationships it's kind of like those ones and zeros that binary code even though there is an entire smorgasbord of incredible human beings out there for us to intersect orbits with and to experience the energies of of each other it can in this simulation while harnessed here in this illusory simulation of duality truly the the main way the really the I'm not gonna say the only way because I don't want to box myself in here but the prevalent way let's put it that way the prevalent way in order to explore and to further examine those energetic exchanges between humans it's between two people and you know this is this is seen in all of the different kinds of relationships that are um, that, that we can observe here let's let's go through some examples you know the most obvious is the, the romantic relationship between husband and wife or you know other kinds of spouses or you know it, even with the entire transgender phenomena that has you know it, it, it has come about in such a an epic way like there there is so much exploration in that right now um, just in what it means to be human and what it means to love and this is something like that human design has so much to offer us in terms of how your energy intersects with my energy and how something new is born of those energies intersecting that is far greater than the sum of each individual part and this can be observed with parenthood like a parent and a child I know that my children they're constantly like they they are um, extrapolating from this uh, simulation of duality also asking me all the time which one of us is your favorite mom you know like even though we come from this primordial essence of a collective consciousness and of which we are all um, equally a part of something about the duality of two here on planet earth is something that we are here to explore it's it's part of the framework it's part of the um it, it, it's it's part of the programming if you will that it's it's a bit difficult to break free of that now that's not to say that you can't 
<laughs> Certainly people, um, you know, like Ra Uruhu, who went off to Ibiza and I think he had a psychotropic experience and for eight days heard a voice. And, you know, part of him was, ex he, he was extracting knowledge and wisdom from the entire universe in those moments, you know, and I, I've, I've done, I've done similar things where I have felt that I was connected and, and kind of in this primordial soup, if you will. And I've recently connected with an incredible woman um, by the name of Karina Hammerston. We've had one chat and I'm so excited to have more. But uh, she said whenever she gave me an Akashic reading, and this resonated so deeply, you guys, that, um, you know, we were part of the original um, incarnates here whenever we were um, we, we were extracting from the mainframe collective consciousness like we, we were one of the original pioneers to individualize and to trickle down into the simulation as you know pioneers of that experience that many would embark upon after we trailblazed that if that makes sense I know that I have always thirsted and longed for these um, these encounters, these interactions, these relationships with so many people. And but so much has come through in the last couple of weeks in me realizing that, you know, the way in which you gain the most traction and the most value is through that focus and that precision of observation between one person and another at a time because for one thing our human brains like it's very difficult for us to break out of that duality even our brains are uh, reflections of that binary system of the left and the right of the this and the that of the yes and the no right of the you and the me and this is a prevalent facet and feature of the human experience. Now, is that to say that we can't have many different relationships, at, you know, at one time? No, of course not. And, um, you know, time is infinite. But here in the simulation, that is another thing. You know, that is part of the experience. And so it's, it's, a, it's a dance. It's a delicate dance of learning how to allocate your time and your resources to these differing relationships that are meaningful. And they may even be working relationships. So many of my relationships that I am so excited about exploring through human design and otherwise right now, they are working relationships. They're my mentors. They're my clients. They're these people that I am really excited to collaborate with and to have these conversations that are meaningful to the collective right on my podcast Zen Gen Connections and it, it even takes it a step further with human design not only are you able to look at an individual's body graph and all of the energies that flow through their beingness and have done so as a blueprint that they were born with but once you have that information you're actually able to compare contrast and merge together those energies into two different body graphs and seeing how they intersect together and what new energies are born of that intersection it's fascinating you guys it goes on and on all of the many nuances that can be explored for human beings through human design and the relationships that are possible I know that you've walked into a room and immediately upon meeting someone, perhaps you only shook their hand or made eye contact and you said nothing at all, but immediately you felt some schism. You felt some kind of a dissonance there that you couldn't quite explain and you knew that you didn't want to be speaking to that person anymore. You knew that that was an uncomfortable feeling, you know, like I know that you've felt that just like I have, just like everyone has. Just because we don't have some kind of evidential um, yeah, proof of what is happening doesn't mean that it's not happening, right? 
And I, I believe that we are getting to this cutting edge of science exploration and innovative technologies that is going to start explaining some of these phenomenon and these nuances of how it is human beings relate together. And it's, it's going to be blowing our minds in no time at all. And human design is going to be on the cutting edge of that science. And I'm, I'm so excited to be, to be getting on board with that right now. Um, I believe it is information and, um, it, it's, it's research that's very much needed right now with so much division and so much misunderstanding. Um, in all of the relationships that we are, um, that, that we endeavor to have, you know, because we as humans are here, if for nothing else, to relate to one another. And how else better to do that than through the science of differentiation between us to find that golden thread of sameness that we all innately are. So. I just wanted to clue you guys in on what was what is rippling through my orbit right now. If you're interested in a connection session with me, I invite you to book onto my calendar in a Voxer style voice note transmission exchange. It will be five full days of energetic exchange between us in a voice note transmissions of, of me responding to you af, uh, all following a 15 minute zoom session where we will sync up our energies, our, our energy fields for an intentional exploration and deep dive together. They are revealing so much. I can't even tell you how much they are uh, illuminating for my clients that just participated in the first ever event of Define Your Design with Rex Bear on Leak Project. It was such a success. We had so many people in the room and many of them booked sessions later. And, you know, there's still some on my calendar that I, I can't wait to intersect orbits with them because the energy in the room was one of it, everyone was enamored with the information. It was like it was like a kid in a, a candy store, and it was filled with candy they'd never seen before. That's really what it felt like. And we're going to be doing this again, so stay tuned for the date upcoming on that because that's about to be announced. And I just I can't wait to to just flood the collective with this information to just to really saturate you with all of this uh, this knowledge that. Like I said, so much of it is trickling in from, you know, age old modalities and past spiritual philosophies that are being kind of revamped in this way that is applicable to the contemporary times we find ourselves within. Okay. And yes, these, these connection sessions are paving the way there. They are illuminating for everyone that I'm working with, these relationships that are, you know, so many people have formed these relationships seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, some people have reconnected with their uh, with their children that they haven't you know connected with in quite some time, and just out of nowhere that you know they they re reignited a relationship. Um, some people have, you know, escaped some pretty tumultuous experiences. One person being in like a government work camp that, you know, he, he found himself finally free of, of that tyranny and, and that, um, that challenge. And, and he found himself able to explore who he was again outside of that. And he connected with an individual that their connection charts were absolutely phenomenal in how it is that they bridge the gaps for each other's deeper learning. And I was able to, um, I was able to reveal that for him and to pave his way forward. He's already booked another session because of the transformation that it is providing to his life during this very pivotal time in his life. 
I'm really excited for some of these sessions that are about, you know, these these romantic difficulties. Some people that have been married for 20 years and they thought they were just absolutely solid in this this relationship with this person they absolutely love, but some kind of epic shift has created some kind of disarray in their individuality which has caused a schism in the energetic frequency that their relationship is an embodiment of, right? And these are these are things that many people will want to shy away from and not look at because some of them are uncomfortable. If that's you, I, I urge you to move along because what we do with, with this work, if you sign up to work with me, what we do is we lean in closer. We lean in closer and we take a closer look so that some some real illumination of what it is you're going through and it revealing some of the mysteries of your past so that it can outline the trajectory of your future way forward that is the name of this game that is what it is we're out to do so i'm going to drop two links here in this live one is going to be the one that I want you to join me live with Nathaniel Gillis, the demonologist that, you know, we might not see eye to eye on everything, but that's why I invited him for a second part two of this conversation, because I want to know his perspective, because it honestly is strengthening and illuminating my own. And I'm learning so much that I would not have otherwise had I not leaned in closer. That's the first link. The second link I'm going to drop in so that you can book a connection session with me so that we can look further into your human design. Okay, we can look at your body graph. We can look at your energetic frequencies and your soul signature blueprint that you were born here on earth to be an embodiment of and to strengthen the collective with. So many of us are held back by the conditioning the conditioning that is accumulated by us every step of the way from the moment we're born, right? And it, it holds us back from living in alignment with our design that we are here to embody, okay? And I am excited to illumine some of these energies for you and to kind of look face to face at some of the the things that might not resonate as much because that is usually an indication of conditioning and I'm here to help you break free of that so that you can intersect energetically and exchange frequencies with others in the most meaningful way of relating through the science of differentiation possible on planet earth while we are in the simulation of duality of you know that energetic exchange that i mean that that's what we're here to do and to develop that deeper learning with so i'm so excited to help facilitate that for you so if that speaks to you i encourage you to book a connection session with me or if you're looking for something deeper and more inclusive of more time then there's a Zinj Energy activation that you will get an entire month's worth of these Voxer style voice notes of energetic exchange back and forth where I am responding to you like the generator that I am because I am here to I, I'm here to have to behold of your energy to see how it intersects with mine and then to respond in turn of what it is I see and what it is I'm experiencing and everything that is rippling through the ether for us both for our deeper learning and a transformative experience of the, you know, what it is to be a human avatar on planet Earth. It's very exciting and it's very timely. And I am so lit up by this work and I'm very excited to work with you. So, Go ahead and book a session if that speaks to you and be sure to join me in, on Zenjin Connections. I'm dropping the link right now. I love you so much. Zenjin, signing off.